of my favorite topics in this game is ball players and let's talk about how we can change this number from a 72 overall to a 99 overall but before that there are some things you need to know the first thing you must know is that every base attribute without selecting an archetype or a loadout starts off at a 30 and they maximize at a 50 so once you hit 50 that would be when your cap is reached now certain archetypes and certain loadouts allow you to specialize in certain attributes for example a power archetype with a slug and loadout is going to allow you to set the cap of your power numbers a lot higher so it might start off at 50 55 60 but you still have that 20 point range to go ahead and maximize that attribute now equipment allows you to go beyond that 20 point cap and the equipment you see it by whatever the positive number above the base attribute is so for example you're seeing a plus 17 against both sides when it comes to contact that means that i don't have if i were to go into a game 43 contact against both sides i actually have 60 contact against both sides and in terms of power i actually have 92 versus right and then 87 versus left handers but it is important that whatever player you are looking to maximize these attributes of is the player you either a are going to be playing road to the show non-stop with or b you are taken into diamond dynasty the reason this is important is this is my main shortstop i have him currently at a gold archetype the anomaly and we are currently using fielding one power one speed three and speed one we just seen his base attributes let's go ahead and switch on over to a brand new shortstop that i just created before the video even started he is the power archetype same exact build as my shortstop with the same loadout and the same perks as well we look at his base attributes and he does not start off with the same base attributes as my other shortstop why because attributes are no longer synced across all your ball players only the archetype progress is so each time you create a new ball player and you want to maximize those attributes you're gonna have to grind those attributes out in road to the show it is not possible to do so so in Diamond Dynasty, so you're going to have to grind that player and his archetype unless you already have maxed it out through road to the show in order to get it to the point you want it to be at in Diamond Dynasty. Now, let's talk about maxing out your contact versus right. You are not going to be able to work on both contact and power, unfortunately, at the same time, unless you get one of the challenges. The way you maximize your contact attribute out as fast as possible is when you are facing a right-hander and you want to work on contact, you have to swing with the contact swing. You can swing with normal as well, but unless you hit it on the ground, it is most likely going to go ahead and increase your power. So that's why using contact is best because even if I do hit a home run, it is only going to go ahead and give me contact. This dynamic challenge is one of the ways that you can go ahead if it had something like hit a home run instead of having to power swing that you could work on contact and power at the same time. Because for example, if you were to have hit a home run and you were swinging with circle contact, you would get contact. And in addition to that, you would always get the power base gain as well. But here we have a great example of how we can work on power and contact at the same time versus a right hander we just need to make solid contact it does not say we have to use a contact swing so instead i'm going to swing with square because i want to guarantee that he is using all his power and we're getting a power increase if we drive in a run and make solid contact it is going to give us the power increasements as well as the contact increasements so the dynamic challenges are actually a lot more important than you might think they are and in order for you to get them of course you need to pass the mission or it needs to be mission success if you fail it unfortunately you do not get that contact boost but because we did swing with power we do get that power boost fielding wise it's pretty simple how you go ahead and increase your fielding just making plays for catchers, it's a little bit more difficult to increase reaction because reaction is more based on bunts and how well you jump out of that catcher position in order to go ahead and catch a pop-up. To me, I don't get reaction a lot, but I definitely get fielding a lot. There, we swung with power. We're going to get power versus right. We could have swung with normal, meaning X, and we still would have gotten power versus right. How you increase your speed is by hitting doubles, by hitting triples, and stealing bases as well. 
How you increase your base running aggressiveness as well as your stealing is by stealing bases, but everything has a downside to it as well. Here we are defensively once again. As you can see, I instantly jumped out, but all I'm getting is fielding. Catchers, fielding, arm strength, and arm accuracy are most likely going to be the only ones that you really get to work on. There we go, we just hit a home run, we were swinging with normal, and that is going to go ahead and increase our power. It is also going to go ahead and increase our clutch, not only because we just hit a home run, but because we were trailing and we took back the lead. So that's gonna give us a boost to our clutch, and because we had a dynamic boost challenge as well, it's working on our discipline and clutch. Now, how do you work on your vision? You work on your vision by swinging at pitches inside the strike zone. If you foul it off, it's gonna go ahead and boost your vision how do you work on your discipline it would be taking pitches that are ball as well as check swinging on pitches that are balls and whenever you get the dynamic boost challenges you're gonna also be able to work on that now, if you were wondering about the downsides everything has downsides to it if you swing and a miss at a pitch inside the strike zone or if you take a pitch inside the strike zone that is clearly a strike you are going to suffer vision now versus left-handers you get to work on power or contact dependent on whatever it is you want to work on. If you wanna work on the contact, you're swinging with contact. If you wanna work on the power, you're swinging with power. If you make weak contact, either swinging with circle, with X or square, whatever attribute, you are gonna get it decreased. So if you hit a weak line drive, you are most likely losing power against right. If you hit a weak ground ball, you are losing contact versus right. And if you're swinging at pitches outside of the strike zone and it's reducing in weekly or it's resulting in weekly hit balls, you are also going to get vision as well decreased. So it is important that you go ahead and look at your base attributes before you jump into a game and see what it is you need to work on. And then once inside the game, you are working on that and only that. For Look at that, we hit a ground ball right there and we still get power versus left. If I would've swung with X, it would've been contact versus left. It's power versus left there because I swung with square. Now to steal bases, we bring the left analog stick down, we lean forward by pressing down on R1 and as soon as the pitcher lifts his foot off, we're pressing the steal button. There the catcher had a bad throw and as you can see, we got plenty of steal and we got plenty of base running aggressiveness. Now, unfortunately, this is the only way you can work on your arm strength and arm accuracy as a catcher. It's by gunning out runners at second base. Or if there is a bunt, throwing the ball over at first base. If you are an infielder like a shortstop, it is a lot easier to work on all of your defensive attributes. Now, after the game, it is important for you to go ahead and check out your base attributes and see the progress that you're making. For example, you're always gonna get durability for just playing in the game and not being injured. You're gonna get speed for hitting doubles, triples, as well as stealing bases. And then stealing, whenever you steal a base, you are gonna get both stealing, base running aggressiveness, Arm strength comes from whenever you throw runners out, arm accuracy, our accurate throws, and then fielding is going to be increased whenever you properly field the ball. Unfortunately, as we go over to the fielding, you will see that reaction actually, or I should say fortunately, reaction actually still gets progressed whenever you catch a pop-up, so I was incorrect about that unfortunately, but it is a good sight to see. And then last but not least, we go over to the hitting. As you can see, you can check out and see where you are capped. If it says cap reached, that means you are capped wherever that is. If it doesn't say cap reached and it shows progression or it says no change, it means you still got some work to do. If it says cap reach, that is the only time you do not have the ability to increase that. Now, you can reach the cap and fall from the cap. For example, I can reach the cap of 50 contact versus left and then eventually fall from contact versus left being maxed out at 50 if I start just having bad contact against left-handed pitching and if I'm not hitting home runs but instead pop-ups versus left-handed pitching. With that being said, the last thing I gotta let you all know is you want to take advantage of these. You have to take advantage. You have to look into what it is that 
you are missing as a player in terms of base attributes before your rest day and then you start working on that so if you are looking to maximize your contact as soon as possible then you go ahead and do hand eye coordination but I would advise strongly against this because you're gonna be working on it if you have to play role to the show to level up your base attributes so that might not be something you want to work on play discipline is something you rarely ever work on cuz on beginner difficulty everything is a strike so this would be something good for you to work on if you want to get your speed up a lot quicker you can go over here and do durability and split and speed as well here you can work on your power as well and even though there are mini games you can just skip the mini game and not even have to play it and still get the attribute increase and then if you want to practice your fielding you want to practice your arm accuracy your arm strength there are options available everywhere you want to go into each and every single category and see what's going to work best for your player since i know i'm not going to be touching discipline i'm just going to go into the discipline tab skip this and you will see that i will still get the plus three to the cap wherever it is and then you go on and continue to grind your roll to the show player all the way to 99 overall in terms of base attributes and then with the perks and the equipment you'll have over a hundred in terms of every single attribute that is capable of going over a hundred